We just made these two fall reversible front porch welcome signs. Fall, Halloween. And we'll show you how we did it right now. What is up? A welcome back. Do you like to do a builder to make it? We do too. And we have a new video each week. And this week, it's another Vera request. <laughs> <laughs> we got a request for a reversible front porch welcome sign fall Halloween. So we can't let a holiday go by without doing a front porch welcome sign to match the holiday or the season. So this will be the first time we've actually done a reversible. I'm surprised that this is our first time doing a reversible. It, it is. I mean, it's sign. pretty easy. You're just painting and adding stuff on both sides. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, we, we wanted to do the reversible one to show you, you know, carry us from fall to Halloween. I know we just did something similar, a swappable gnome and a couple of our other projects. It's all about the interchangeable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this week we're going to continue the fall series and now we're going to do fall Halloween front porch welcome sign. And we've got some fun Halloween things coming up where this is our kind of transition period into Halloween. So we look forward to sharing some cool holiday, Halloween ideas we have coming up. Oh yeah, we got some good ideas. <laughs> Step one, we're gonna gather all of our materials. We needed four dog-eared fence pickets because we're making two reversible signs. Oh uh, yeah, I didn't mention we were making two of them. Two. <laughs> And then one gothic picket that we're going to cut up and use for the braces. Then some paints, stains, whatever you're going to use to decorate it. So this is a collection of our country chic fall colors that we've put together. All of these are what we've been using in our last couple of projects and we'll use in this project here. And hopefully Garrett's going to label each one for you so that you can see each color. You can stop and, and uh, write down each color. Get a good close-up of the label. <laughs> Step two. Now we're going to make all of our cuts. We're really just making like four cuts because we're making two signs on this uh, gothic picket. Eleven and a quarter inches. Measure the pickets you're using though because not all pickets are created equal. Yes, so. we certainly learned that over the last several months as folks come reach, reach back out to us and say, I can't find the dog-eared fence picket. You might have to find what's common in your area. We're in Virginia and there are pine trees everywhere. So I have a feeling that's why we see so much pine yeah. here in our Home Depot and Lowe's. So you'll need to check your home improvement store and use the pickets that you can find. Ours are six feet tall, so anything that's that height will work and yours might be a little more rough than ours that we get the smooth ones so you might have to add a little sanding uh, but it doesn't take much to make it it doesn't have to be perfectly smooth just knock off the rough edges just enough to get that vinyl to stick if you're using a stencil yep i got something in my pocket hold on ah, my pocket saw <laughs> that's what we're using to make all of our cuts Safety first, y'all. <laughs> y'all. Y'all, I don't know why I started saying y'all. Mm -hmm. Step three. Now we're gonna glue down the brackets to the pickets. We're gonna measure up two and a half inches from the bottom and three and a half inches down from the top. That leaves you about 58, 59 inches in between. We get questions, do we glue the pickets together down the middle? No, we don't. We just glue the brace to the pickets. Right, he's using wood glue and a nail and you can always use traditional Gorilla Glue and just glue them straight down. We'll show you in a video that I'll post over Kim's head. <laughs> Step four. 
Now it's time to paint and do some staining. Yeah. So mostly painting. Well, I mentioned we were doing two signs. So one is going to have a stencil on both front and back, and the other is going to have one of our kits our laser cut kits on the front and back. So for this one, this is our stencil sign and we're gonna start with a coat of black on the, wait a minute, which is it? It's, it's white on the front with our cross braces and black on the back. <laughs> <laughs> and we're using, I didn't mention, we're using our Country Chic chalk paint. Step five. Now we're gonna add our design. This is, this is, we got multiples. We got four designs we have to lay down. Yeah, this one's, yeah, we got, we got some project work to do here. All right, so we're gonna do the most interesting one, the most intricate one, most steps first. So we've got these cute little pumpkins and we're gonna add the welcome to our patch onto this stencil. So there's two stencils that are involved. There's the pumpkins, and then we're gonna stencil over the pumpkins with our word patch, P-A-T-C-H will go on each pumpkin, and then welcome to our will go at the top. And then we're planning to add some accents, you know, some flowers and some ribbon. Some and French. Yeah. Oh well, yeah, well, oh, I'm, I'm taking that from you. I know Garrett likes uh, to add the accents. Wee oui, wee. Oui. <laughs> All right, I don't know why I grabbed that. We're gonna, Typically, what we do with our stencils, we're just going to peel off the paper backing. Where are we going to cut them up first? Or are we just cool with the spacing? I think I'm cool with the spacing. We did talk about cutting them and um, kind of what I think would look really cute is if you overlay them a little bit, you know. But uh, we've got so much room on this board that I think I'm going to leave mine just as is. And um, we will cut welcome to our obviously because yeah we got to cut up patch so we can put it on each one so for this one i think we're good all right cool let's do it let's do it let's do it are we going to meet in the middle yes are we meeting in the middle like lady in the tramp you know what it made me think of hmm. that song from the skating rink lady in the tramp no meeting in the ladies room <laughs> <laughs> It is I'll be back real soon. <laughs> so I get a lot of questions as well about how do you get it to stick to the boards? We don't really have a problem with it sticking to the boards. It'll yeah. stick. I mean, you do want to press it down to make sure when you feel the transfer tape up that it doesn't come off. Um, if anything, we have more issues with peeling the transfer, I mean, uh, peeling the stencil up after we're painting, and it'll try and take some of the paint with it. So we have to be careful with that. So our boards don't line up. Uh, we get questions on this one too. What if your boards don't aren't exactly even? That's okay. They warp, and, and they'll warp over time too. I uh, just like he did. We cut the stencil, and as they warp, it'll move. Yeah, it'll move. It's all right. If anybody gets too picky about your front porch welcome sign, say, "Get off my porch." <laughs> it's just view it from over there. It's just a front porch sign. I mean, it's supposed to be a little rustic, little farmhouse looking. It doesn't have to be perfect. You really don't need it to be perfect. Oops. We say it all the time, peel back. You see, I don't lift up at all. I just peel straight back. And then if a little piece comes up, you just push it back down. Mod Podge tricks. Or should we just use the base coat? I say we just use the paint. All right, let's just use the base coat. We're gonna use the base coat to create a little barrier around the edge of the stencil so it doesn't leak underneath the stencil, so it doesn't bleed. So we're going back to the base paint. Base paint. Because our brush is still here and it's wet, so yeah. it just makes it easier. If you stretch your stencil, which we've done it a million times ourselves, um, as you pull, it might stretch the, the vinyl. Um, I would just slice it and then just overlap it. We're 
about to do a whole lot of dabbing. We got all these different colors. Each pumpkin's going to be its own color. <laughs> Yay, painting. <laughs> Yeah, so let me tell you the colors. Fresh mustard with a twist, sparklers, paint the town, and cheers. Cheers. Barely dry, like it's still shiny in a lot of places. We're gonna try to pull it up. We can add the stencils now. So now we're gonna add welcome to our patch. Right here, I got them. There you go. And we're just gonna cut up, cut out each letter, and then put it over the pumpkins, which I think are dry enough. We're gonna do Mod Podge on this. I think it'll be easier than. Using all the different brushes of the different base coats. Little incident over there, but no deal now. You guys squint to see it. You won't even tell. Let's see if you guys can tell. It's funny, I get messages all the time. It happens to me too. Yeah. Sometimes it doesn't come out perfectly. A little bleeding never killed no one. Well, I guess it depends. Paint bleed. No paint bleed. Out. No, never kill no one. I didn't All right. Catch where you're going. Now we're gonna flip it. You think it's dry enough to flip? I think if you set this right here, and that should be the end. What's happening down there? Ah, 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 ah. They're still a little damp. I think it's because the boards are still damp. They have that pressure treated solution in them, which. They, when you pick them up sometimes they're still pretty wet so we try and let them dry in the garage for a couple of days um, but these we picked up what yesterday yeah. so they're not quite dry so it's taking the paint a little longer to dry so be careful of that when you put your stencil down because if the paint stays wet underneath it's more likely to peel up the stencil is yeah. peel up the paint when you pull the stencil up yeah if your board's too wet that's really when uh, the stencil is hard to stick your board could be rough and it'll stick better than if your board is still wet. But we'll, uh, we're gonna go for it anyway. <laughs> yeah. Alright, we're just using the heat gun to heat it up just a little bit. So it shrinks just a little bit, it heats up just a little bit so we can try to tack it down in place. Now I'm just hoping that it peels up. Okay. <laughs> All right, a sign number one done. And then this is our patch. We'll be back for some accents. Right, I'm gonna add some ribbon and some things on it. Back with sign number two. So we stained the entire thing. And got it in some paint, but we'll fix that. And we got it in some paint. <laughs> it's okay. And then we put a light coat of the white on top. Yep, it's on top of the stain. And it's not a perfect paint coat. I don't know if you can see that from there. But that's okay because I am going to distress it a little before we add the accents on top. Accents. <laughs> the great thing about this paint is it really does distress excellently. It's easily distressed. Yes. Problem is, it's very chalky. It's distressing my lungs. <laughs> 
for sign two, we're taking it to a whole other dimension. We're taking it 3D. I took some MDF over to the Glowforge and I cut out my design for my sign. And so my design. This one I just think is going to be a lot easier. That stencil, while it works and it's beautiful, these are a whole lot easier. So uh, this is another one and it's going to be similar. I'm going to make it say fall in these leaves. And, and mine is going to be a witch. It's going to say witch. And I have a witch hat and some boots. I picked it. It's going to say the witch is in. Yeah, Kim picked it. I just made it. <laughs> All right. Time to paint. I like I like how I have a little outlines in mine. I don't have to worry about it. And I don't have to worry about bleeding under the stencil. I do have to have a steady hand. Yeah, you do have to have a steady hand. Still in step five. So, step five. C? Are we up to C now? Do we have to add all the I don't know. pieces, parts? I think so. So, we're just going to use this Gorilla Glue. It's like rubber cement contact adhesive. We're going to flip them all over. Yep. Lay it on there. Yep. Wait two minutes. Yes, there's the trick, Garrett. It's like the longest two minutes. Mm -hmm. And then you flip them all over, boom, almost instant. Almost, almost. instant. All right, so is this where they go? Yeah. Right. See? <laughs> <laughs> stuck. <laughs> huh, it, is, it is kind of stuck. Not bad. I am going to lift it. Are you sure? Yeah. BAM! It'd be funny if they all slid off. No, it wouldn't. No, it wouldn't. Let's flip it. Second side, same as the first. I'm going to lay that down so we don't mess it up. It's dry. Yeah, but I don't know if all the paint down there is dry. Alright, last step, we add the accents! It's really just two bows, and it's just like half bows. So, I cut a piece of ribbon from this side to this side. What, what, what is it? I can tell you, hold on. Like Give me an estimate. 12 inches? Uh, about 14 inches, I would say. 14 inches. Um, and so, since I have the witch on the back side, I'm just going to glue that on each side and then I can keep the ribbon on the front side and then the witch on the back side. Sign the same as the first. So we've completed all of our painting and I added a little bow, but it still looks boring. So I, Garrett actually was nice enough to run out and get, I said, find me some fall accents. And he's gotten leaves and pumpkins and sunflowers. He did a really great job and corn and he seems to be real, be real partial to this corn so I'll be adding that at the bottom. <laughs> well I saw it in a, on a wreath. And it was perfect and you're like we yeah. need that. So on one side of the aisle were a bunch of wreaths and on the other side were a bunch of parts and pieces. So I picked the wreath that I liked and picked up some parts and pieces. All right well this little this little great set was already it came all together these berries a pine cone some leaves and a pumpkin and i'm going to put that right at the top here and really fill in the top portion of this and i'm just going to hot glue it so we've got our little hot glue gun here steaming looking super hot super like it's going to burn you <laughs> It's just looking for some skin. Right, it is. It's out, out for some skin. You ain't getting me. 
Are you kidding me? If it's gonna get anyone, it's you. No, oh, yeah, I know. That's what I'm not messing with. Mm -hmm. Picked out some of this raffia for us. I love this orange, but it might be too bright for this one. So I think I'm gonna use this little burgundy version, which is great for this color scheme. So I'm just gonna fold that and hot glue that at the bottom. So it kind of looks like grass in the patch. I think that worked out well. Hey, it worked. Oh, yeah, look at that. Yeah, so, yeah, can you show them? There you go, not too bad, huh? See, it's like little grass down there. It really added some, what it needs, some interest to this thing. Oh, yeah, okay. And then the back side, I don't think I need anything unless you think we need some sort of a purple ribbon up here. Do you think we need a little? No, I think it looks like The hat good. is its ribbon. Does it need something? Do you guys think it needs something? Right, should I put a purple? purple bow or ribbon up here just to give it that I feel like it needs that purple pop for for Halloween well maybe I don't know do you have a purple ribbon yes just like that we well, can't wrap it here we'll kind of hide our hat but no. I don't know it probably doesn't need it I don't think it needs a ribbon okay could be a bow or something up there want to make your own fall farmhouse what is it reversible sign um, either either method we're gonna make these MDF letters available in our store so it's a little witch kit and it'll be the fall kit and then we're gonna have the SVGs for the pumpkins we can make those into an MDF kit if folks want those we can do that too Let us know. and um, the trick-or-treat in the back we'll have the SVGs for both of those so that you can make your own stencils and make your own reversible sign with a stencil and then we'll have these kits as well all right we're about out of time so I'm gonna go grab some dinner <laughs> and uh, we'll see you guys next week where we'll do it build it and make it again with the raffia on the ceiling. The ceiling's really low. Woo!